Hello and welcome to Perception Media. I'm your hostess, The Cine Geek, and today I'm going to be doing a 90s kid take on Weird Science, a fairly iconic John Hughes film. I almost said Howard Hughes. I haven't done any kind of reviews on his movies, but I do like Hell's Angels. That's beside the point. Um, this is a movie that came out in like 1985, and it's with Anthony Michael Hall and not Anthony Michael Hall. And uh, they create a, a, they bring a Barbie to life with a computer? Okay, okay. I digress, and I probably set women back who knows how many years. <sighs> All the wrong things. <laughs> um, yeah, so they use a computer and bring a woman to life, and she's like the sexiest lady. It's ridiculous. And then they immediately shower with her. <gasps> what? That doesn't make any sense. I do like that, um, from a, a filmmaking standpoint, they kind of use, um, the cinematic Frankenstein and, uh, the line, uh, she's alive! Oh, they're watching Bride of Frankenstein. I'm stupid. They use the line in Bride of Frankenstein when Frankenstein says, she's alive! And to kind of go with the song, the song is great. I'll have a link to it below. It's by, um, Oingo Boingo, which the lead singer was Danny Elfman. Uh, who does a lot of um, songs with like Tim Burton and various other people in cinema today, which is pretty cool to think about that he was doing, you know, he's the lead singer of a band like 30 years ago. It's pretty crazy. I wonder what caused him to change into doing composing. But anyway, um, so it's it's a pretty crazy ride from there and there is some surrealist kind of stuff that happens which I really like like from a, a filmmaking standpoint it's crazy and fun but some of the things that they're showing you just don't make sense and they don't hold up very well now the technology I think does I mean there are some references to like computer stuff like I said at the beginning I don't understand um, I kind of had to ask ask someone so apparently you could unplug your phone and that disconnects the internet, I guess? Not, not positive on that. But I did ask, there was no way you could bring a woman to life through these means. I just wanted to make sure. I'm, I don't know. The 80s were a weird time. So anyway, um, we have Anthony Michael Hall's character um, and Wyatt's. I'm sorry, and Garrett, the not Anthony Michael Hall character. And they kind of go to a mall and start, no, I'm sorry, they go to a bar. And Lisa gives them fake IDs because she can materialize things. I just want to know, what was Lisa? What do her powers consist of? Where do they end? Is she, is she a genie? I have so many unresolved questions for this film. I should do a review on Mannequin. Well, anyway, so... So, she gets them drunk. They're 15-year-old boys. And then she kisses Garrett while, for whatever reason, they're playing the theme song for The Exorcist. I think this is going to get dark. <laughs> and then his, um, Garrett's, um, I'm sorry, Wyatt's evil brother, Bill Paxton, shows up and um, makes him pay him money to keep it a secret, which I feel like that's a really brotherly kind of relationship, but it goes downhill real fast. And uh, Garrett, Wyatt, I don't know, the not Anthony Michael Hall character um, asks Lisa, why she, you know, I created you. Why do you keep doing things I don't want you to? Whew. It's it's really awkward, because I'm watching this movie, and she's an adult woman, and there's these two 15-year-old boys, and they're just doing so much inappropriate things. And then uh, she goes to Wyatt's house to tell his parents that he's going to a party, 
and she points a gun at them. <gasps> what is happening? And then she causes them to forget that happened, but she like totally erases Garrett from his father's memory. So is he like just gonna be an orphan now? Or what? <laughs> I don't understand. And then she basically technically, I mean, she kidnaps him. I mean, he's okay with it, but still, that's that's child abduction. Uh, but I guess it's good because his father doesn't remember he exists. Uh, this whole movie's awkward. So they have a party, and like basically the entire school shows up, and including these two bullies that are Iron Man and um, not Iron Man, with the two girls that are seen at the very beginning of the film that Garrett and Wyatt really like. And it's foreshadowed that they're going to end up with them. Surprise, they end up with them. Which, I mean, we all knew that's where it was going, so I'm not going to say that's a problem or anything. But, eh. And they do seem to like them, but I, I don't know. The whole Lisa thing is just its so creepy. And she's talking to the bullies, cause, because the bullies really like Lisa. And she says she belongs to Garrett and Wyatt. And... That's just weird. I don't understand. And there's this part where she says it's totally sexual. And then she tells the two teenage girls that she they should take a shower with Garrett and Wyatt. What are you abdicating, movie? I feel like this whole movie just feels like it was written by a man who never got laid in high school. And I can't affirm or deny what was going on in John Hughes' life, but that's just what it seems like. So anyway, then she wants Garrett and Wyatt to kind of grow up hair. So she causes, like, I don't know, Mad Max meets the Hills Have Eyes to show up on, like, as a gang of motorcycle uh, bullies, uh, gangsters. I don't, I'm not really sure what was happening with them. It was weird. And then Garrett and Wyatt are forced to kind of stand up and save the house and the people in the party. And they do... I think the only really redeeming quality in this film is the friendship between Wyatt and Garrett. It does seem to be pretty solid. I mean, there's a little self, there's a little like deprecation on the part of Wyatt kind of making fun of Garrett sometimes, but Garrett does kind of stand up for himself, so I think it's fine. Other way around, I'm getting their names backwards. Whatever, Anthony Michael Hall kind of makes fun of Garrett's character, um, the Garrett character. No, because he's Garrett. Dang it! Every time, makes fun of the Wyatt character. And then the Y character um, kind of grows up here and he makes fun back. and It's fine. Um, and then they end up with the girls. They sleep with them. I don't know. The brother comes home. He's pissed. And then Lisa turns him into something gross. I don't really know what that was. Don't want to know. Um, she says everything she did should reverse itself. I'm not sure if that happens or not. So maybe Anthony Michaels Hall's father will remember who he is, I hope. Um, like I said, I like the surrealist aspects of it, like people being changed into things and um, uh, the, uh, I don't know, the wish fulfillment aspect of it. But the, I feel like the boys never really, they learned to like respect themselves and to be more brave and to stand up for themselves, but they I feel like the, something they neglected to learn was to have any respect towards women. And I find that kind of problematic considering the theme of this whole film is very like men get what they want and women are an object to help them get that. And the women are an object to obtain. And I, I don't particularly like that. I didn't mean to have a feminist view of this. Um, but from the point of view of it being 2018, I am a woman. Um, my 90s kid view of this is it's, it's, it's a very negative one. I mean, it's a cute movie, but overall I wouldn't, I, I don't think it holds up at all. And in fact, it's, it's kind of, it's not offensive or anything, but it's just kind of like movie. This is for like basement dwellers that, you know, have never even had the nerve to speak to a woman that, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. So, I just, as a girl, I don't, I don't like, as a girl and as a 90s kid, I'm sorry, I just don't like this movie very much. 
I love the song though. Oingo Boingo is awesome. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we need a Moon Knight movie and I will pimp out my Twitter. I usually just make funny pop culture references and stuff like that. Um, so feel free to follow me. Have a wonderful day.